I am Brother John Allen Green, a Franciscan friar and a hermit from Johannesburg, and this is my weekly podcast, Reflections from the Hermitage. Some six years ago, on a Sunday morning, I had just proclaimed this gospel at St. Pius X in Pretoria, and in the congregation there was a young man, he was Afrikaans speaking, he was from a background of the Reformed Church, he was blind. After the celebration of this Mass, Andre came up to me and he spoke to me about the gospel, how it had touched him and how it appeared to be meant specifically for him. He was the man in the gospel, and he had found a great treasure, and he was going away with the greatest gratitude and joy. Early on the following morning, I was called to Andre's home. But when I reached him, Andre was already dead. What wonderful joy to pass to eternal life with his new found treasure, the most powerful reminder of how often we seek to look for our treasures in all the wrong places. The man of the gospel finds a treasure in a field totally by chance, and he hides it again. The treasure belongs in the field, and he can only own the treasure if he owns the field. We see how the man goes off happy, smile on his face and a bounce in his step. What is he going to do? We're told he's going to sell everything that he owns so he can buy that field. Everything he owns. His family and relations probably thought he'd lost his senses and suffered a nervous breakdown. One can almost picture the lawyer's letters. This today is in strong contrast to another ma- uh, man, also the gospel, who offered, was offered a treasure by Jesus himself can imagine Jesus offering us some treasure. He too was to sell everything he owned, but he doesn't, doesn't, he can't. And he goes away sad, because he was a man of great wealth. When we look into ourselves, we see there is something about treasure which assesses us, something that uncovers our true orientation uncovers our attachments, the attachments of our heart. The field that we refer to is, of course, the field that is in our own hearts, where we have to admit both good and evil are to be found. And as the parable states, the treasure is the reign of God, the kingdom of God. But there is something much more here, as Jesus has stated, something more than the wisdom of Solomon. Here we have the divine wisdom of the Logos, who has become for us the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus himself is our treasure. To take possession of the kingdom so that God may reign within us, we actually have to take possession of ourselves, the field that is our hearts. We have to divest ourselves of everything we own, all our possessions, all our opinions, all our perceptions that actually rule us. Not always an easy task. So today we're asked to look, what are those possessions that blind or distort our vision of this great treasure of Jesus, the true good, lovely, pure, and what is eternal? We certainly know that our prejudice, jealousy, and self-conceit can often distort our judgments of ourselves and others and lead us to moral blindness. As our second reading asks, how do we discern good and evil? Always I must begin with myself. To know myself and to come close to those things that motivate me is the start to such discernment. Each one of us begins with a particular picture or an icon of who I am. From this perspective of our reality, we fill our stage of life with those people 
and were those things that give life, that enliven our story. So whether I perceive myself as the healer, the fixer, the provider, the teacher, my life stage will be cluttered with the broken, the sick, the needy and the lost. These are all the people and the things that I need to keep the script that runs my storyline. As far as I can behold, all that I see is the need of my particular character in the play. I have created a need around me, and my persona is validated, become secure. I need to be needed. This often is called creating our own reality, or as Facebook loves to call it, living my dream. The first step to knowledge is understanding our thoughts and our impulses that support my stage setting. This is the plot to the story of my life that is the very baseline of all my thought patterns. Challenging any particular paradigm is always difficult, can be painful, yet it's absolutely vital to understand the compulsive illusions that I have created round my storyline. As I come closer to viewing this background to my existence, I may find myself becoming angry, becoming disorientated, protective of my little creations. Yet this challenge is vital for the progress towards consciousness, or in biblical terms, metanoia, seeing the right way, which is the only place in which I can encounter Jesus the Christ, encounter God. At the next level of consciousness I begin to note how ideas and thoughts come towards me, acknowledge them, and they fade away. Slowly coming to acknowledge that I observe these thoughts as an observer. I can let go of the painful and addictive attachments I have to these thoughts as being the reality of who I am. Thoughts come and go. Yes, some we store as useful and beneficial. Others just fade away. Yet these thoughts are not the reality of the observer, the I am. I now come to acknowledge the thoughts and the memories that hold me chained to the past, those embossed into never-ending story of dusty albums. This is the place where I am held captive of what has been, ever fretting over this moment of now and fearful over what is yet to come. But as I come slowly to breathe into this now, I start to become aware of a consciousness that is beyond all the illusions I have created. This is not some Gnostic personification of wisdom, but is an encounter with a reality that is that truth, way and life. It's an encounter with being itself. In the evidence given by the life of young Andre, we see that he had given up these possessions. He had found for himself the pearl of great value, and he could look on all with compassion that came out of his own suffering. The man in the gospel, just like Andre, glimpsed the treasure and hurried away eagerly and happily with joy to set themselves free from all that had suddenly become worthless to them. We know that patiently, every now and then, at a time of God's choosing, he takes from us one or another little trinket, some little plan we had, something we've been hiding from God, something we're clinging to. Each time God gives us another opportunity to renew our commitment to both the journey and the goal. When Andre died, he was only in his twenties. He had finished his journey with us, and so today it seems appropriate to remind especially our young people that Jesus invites each one of you, each one of you as an individual, stands before him in all of your freedom to let him show you the treasure buried in the field of your true self, 
the place where your true happiness is hidden. It's waiting to be found. May the Lord grant you peace.